Okay, we'll give that just a moment. It's supposed to be... There we go. All right, we're we're live with Busey. And let's see. Stream options. All right. Live with Busey. Okay. Now that's a show you probably want to put on late night cable. Okay, we got somebody in the chat, so at least it is broadcasting. I don't know where to find a link from the back end. Oh, wait, here we go. All right, kicking it to you in Skype. Okay. Or at least I will as soon as I remember where Skype puts all of its inconvenient buttons. <laughs> oh, Skype. Just one of so many vital tools that nobody working on it knows why anybody uses it or how anybody uses it or has any experience with their own goddamn platform. Yep. Automatic volume control you can't turn off. That's not going to be difficult for anyone and everyone. Let's not put our let's not put your individual uh, discussions with people in individual windows. Let's just cram them all into a drop down thing. Exactly. Like you're playing fucking Sword Art Online or something. <laughs> Sword Art Online. <sighs> I recently caught a video, somebody, uh, I think I called Mother's Basement, uh, explaining how the game itself within the anime is a shit game. Oh, I think I've actually r watched that video where he goes in about how, like, there, it's like several the, classes the player away base, OP. And... Yeah, the player base is non-existent. The the uh, mm -hmm. the UI is abysmal. Yep. Yeah, I remember that. I I have in fact seen that particular uh, that particular video. Yeah. It's a good one. Yep. Yeah, I do like a good deconstruction, be it be it a positive or negative. I do like those deep dives, which is what we're working on at the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell them a little bit about what's coming up? Yeah, I do. Hold on, let me see if I can actually get this. Because no one wants their stuff automatically centered, exploit. <laughs> Okay, what we are doing is we are, in fact, pulling ourselves a nice, nice deep dive. Um, I got my Deadly Games DVDs, and that's that's good. Yes. Um, however, there is a drawback, which is I have yet been able to... Uh, I'm yet, yet unable to remove from said DVDs uh, the actual encodings. Uh, they all come through green and scrambly. So, because that was going to delay the video, because uh, we've got an upcoming uh, Deadly Games video that's sort of reorienting, basing on us now having DVDs and more information on the background development of the show, uh, we decided to try out a little something different, which is another idea I've been brewing, which is we are going to be digging into the lost, wild, and varied worlds of old school video game bad guys yeah your, your 80s and 90s stuff back when the formula for a good video game hadn't really been refined and everybody was just desperately flinging shit at the wall to see what stuck mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh the before one... before mario's pipes and turtles were normalized and that was just as insane as anything else in video games mm-hmm and where we're starting is with a particular 80s deep dive, which is, uh, some people have already made the guess based on the image I just threw up, <laughs> uh, but the, uh, the actual thing is, uh, hang on just a moment. Konami's 1989 Ninja Turtles video yes. games. When they, one that they were slightly ashamed of enough to call themselves Ultra Games on. <laughs> and, yeah. Out of the way there, buddy. 
So that's what we're working on. We we thought it was gonna we thought this was gonna be a lot shorter video than it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna get split into a two parter. But basically, what we're doing is we're going through the game and we are just pulling whatever and whatever we can find, and we're writing up based on what we find there. Just uh, going through the bestiaries and. Yes, indeed. Well, you know. And we've got a few more planned for later, but we just wanted to get, you know, hopefully that should be up real soon. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it'll be up real soon. Don't worry about it. I'm working on it. Not at the moment, of course, but, you know. Yeah. There we go. That at least looks sane. And, uh, and I've been, I do... Go ahead. And I, as you may have noticed, I've also been doing some custom graphics for our... Our video there. And so we're going through the uh, NES Ninja Turtles game for a particular reason, uh, which is that I have certain thoughts about the Ninja Turtles game as a piece of sort of cultural archaeology, because given uh, 1980s production times and turnarounds and what is and isn't in the game, uh, it's very clear that the game was developed at very early in the sh in the Fred Wolf TV show's development. And so you get to kind of get this little crystallized half snapshot of where it was when the game was put forward. And also you get to see what happens when a licensor uh, winds up getting a whole bunch of uh, stuff from that no one's ever heard of before and has to fill in a video game's worth of bad guys essentially without the help of, the, of any sort of uh, canonical influence. Having to figure out what is what is Ninja Turtles, what fits into this game, based on what little information we have about the franchise, which at that point I estimate was a partially completed television treatment, at most the first two issues of the comic book, uh, the, the Mirage Studios comic book, and a bunch of toy designs. <laughs> Uh, the toy designs things is really uh, is really important because outside everything that is canonical to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, in any in any other version of the franchise that's in the Konami '89 game, if it is, it, it, with the exception of the Mausers, which were a Wave Two toy, the uh, everything in it is first wave action figures. You have the four turtles, Splinter, April. Foot Soldier, Bebop, Rocksteady, Shredder. No mention of Krang. Your uh... oh, you do have the Technodrome. I guess that technically yeah. is one thing, but the Technodrome was obviously developed to be in a, a place that it just didn't come out for a couple of years. One but second. go ahead. Outside of those things, the only other things you have are the big two first wave vehicles: the Turtle Blimp and the Party Wagon. Um, uh, the foot soldiers drive around in a canonic in vehicles that are unique to the game. Uh, if you kind of squint, squint and turn your head, the steamroller kind of looks like maybe it might be derived from the uh, the knucklehead art, but like uh, early knucklehead designs, but misinterpreting the arms as treads. But that's just because they're both kind of boxy vehicles. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff like. Uh, because Peter Laird has a blog, and uh, he's shown off a lot of interesting things on that blog, we know a lot about the early development of the show. And so, at least compared to a lot of other series, like we know that at one point they were pitching the idea that Shredder, uh, Shredder and uh, Splinter would be much more like uh, direct counterparts. Uh, to the point that Shredder would have his own dojo with four mon four mutant minions that are referred to in the early documents as his as the cheating mutants. And there's the uh, some art from Peter Laird's blog of what I of what everybody presumes are an early version of that four mutant concept. You can still see the beginnings of Bebop and Rocksteady over on the side, but they're wearing ninja armor instead of their uh, street punk slash soldier gear. And there's a bulldog and a bull. And I gotta say, I love that Rocksteady in the uh, in the the Shredder esque armor, like he's a protege there. 
but um, it would have been after that, but before everything was completed, because a lot of the characters look like they're Mirage Studio versions. The uh, let's see, as you can see over on the side, the cover art from the from the Mirage from the game was from one of the Mirage Studio issues, like issue number four. Um, and I didn't realize until now that the reason that I'd always sort of assumed that April's jumpsuit look had come out of nowhere is because I grew up with the colorized uh, uh, graphic novels of the Black and White Ninja Turtles comics. Because uh, I don't know if anybody uh, in the 1980s or 1990s attempted to ever buy a black and white comic issue before about issue 12 or 8 or so, but those early issues were really pricey, well outside of my, my range. Um, but in the graphic novels, the uh, first appearance of April, she's colored, uh, she's wearing a jumpsuit, but it's colored blue. And so it had never occurred to me that the people making the Fred Wolf cartoon might have just had issue number two of the black and white comics and went, oh, that's what April looks like. Bob haircut, jumpsuit. We'll work with it. Um, and, uh, There is a certain half-assery to the entire thing. There's a certain half-assery to everything in the 80s. That's uh, part of the charm. It wasn't all scientific and calculated. Well, it's, well, yeah, that's what the whole point of the uh, <laughs> this little enterprise we're doing is. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, we, we, we're breaking down uh, basically every villain in the game that is not like a turret or uh, like uh, some kind of like automated hazard. Because there are like some spinning blade things and turret, wall turrets and things that we don't bother to touch on. But um, we get to play with that. Uh, get to reminisce a little bit about old uh, NES uh, NES manuals, which were one of my favorite things ever. Um, it was yeah, we a, got a few. We got like at least two more that we know we want to touch. Oh yeah, I on, got, and I'm sure there's a there's a wealth of these old games. Yeah, um, one of them is Kid Kid Icarus, just because I love Kid Icarus's baddies. Although Kid Icarus was really good about putting nearly everyone in the manual, so the format might be a little different on that one. Um, and we got several others, um, but yeah, that's what I've been editing on. And uh, oh, uh, if anybody's wondering why there's a blue Leonardo with the uh, the orange headbands uh, up there. That is because of Mecha Turtle, who is one of our uh, sort of keystone characters in the review, um, and uh, he's best described as a he's like the level I think three or four boss level three, and he's basically the Terminator wearing an off wearing a faker colored Leonardo suit, uh, but with swords for hands and he shoots missiles, and. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been working on. And well, there's a bit more other turtles. We've uh, gotten a chance to see the rise of the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, I've seen the first couple of episodes of that. And uh, what do you think of it? Since I just spent the past I'm, big block <laughs> talking, I, I'm liking it quite a bit. I'm one one can. One can lament the rise of the 11-minute cartoon format, but then again, uh, throughout the 90s, that was kind of also the norm. I mean, lest we all forget Tiny Toons and Animaniacs and Freakazoid and just yeah, tons it... of cartoons from the 90s did that, you know, se several segments in a half hour. Right, yeah. Uh, the... The thing that gets me about the 11 minute format is I don't like it for action dunes that much. Um, it kind of depends on the action. I think it works here. I think it works for Rise of the Ninja Turtles because they keep things fast. Mm -hmm. the The plots are not deep. the 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 dialogue is punchy, and I really feel like that's kind of important now, especially with turtles, because um, it's, we've been on record with the old show on record as if people, you know, gave a damn. <laughs> mm -hmm. The old show kind of got up its own ass. Well, the old, when I say the old show, I mean the prior show. The, okay, uh, you mean 2012. Yeah, the 2012 um, show kind of got up its own ass and self-important and stolly and patty and... 
Well, yeah, that was also true a bit of the uh, of the the 2000 era Turtles show. Yeah. Um, but I think now a I think we're a little overdue of just a another just plain old fun take on the turtles. Uh, I, I without would, deep lore, without extent, without how, here's how they're going to recycle those guys we already have seen before. Mm-hmm. I, I think my take on it is that I essentially take the approach that if it's, uh, I would rather have for an action tune 22 minutes that's good. But if I have to have two 11 minutes that are good versus 22 minutes that's boring, I'll take the two 11s. Um, and if I could take the two 11s without uh, any pointless waste of time with the Beach City Townies, then <laughs> I would take that. But, um... Get a little jab at Steven there. <laughs> Well, Steven's also got their scheduling. Well, yeah, it's a Cartoon Network production. Scheduling problems is pretty much... Uh, it's, if they could claim it was a feature, by now they would have. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I, I like the personalities. The animation works a lot better moving than in stills. I'm, yeah, it's really stylized, and I, I really like that. Yeah, I, I'm still not fond of the expanding uh, slope of the heads. The head's getting wider as they go up. I, I don't mm. like that as a general design aspect for the turtles, but it's overlookable. Um, yeah, I, I, will, I, will probably, I will probably never be... I will probably never like Splinter's design in this. No, no, I, Splinter's I design don't is, like it. is He's just awful. ugly. Yeah, it's that... It's, that, it's ugly and vaguely... Uh, it, it's that Spumco slash Klasky 1990s let's make everything ugly thing. And, and just, a, just with just a tinge of maybe a little... Let's go with insensitive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, the, the Turtles personalities stand out real well. Uh, the whole thing leaps in very in media res. It just kind of... Assumes you're going to know who the characters are, which is one of those things that I, I kind of, uh, when, when I was looking over the Ninja Turtles, uh, when I've more, been working on this video, one thing I realized is that, you know, my my generation was the the one that got to go, oh, what the hell is this? Um, there was nothing established. It was just out of nowhere, this teenage mutant, teenage what, the what now? <laughs> You know, uh, I, I have to wonder if perhaps just the idea that it's been around forever now kind of takes away a little bit of the crazy. Um, yeah. But, um, but I mean, at this stage, it's almost like we kind of don't really need to establish the origin. We all know Peter Parker and Bruce Wayne, and we kind of know the Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's not much, I'm, like I said, I'm, there's not much point in going over it uh, again, especially how things are now. But uh, my my general idea is that it's just weird that this is the first time that they, like, just the idea that you wouldn't have to explain for talking Ninja Turtles seems weird to me. <laughs> I mean, I get why, but it's like, it the franchise has been around so long that you don't have to explain who any of the turtles are up front. You just hit with a really quick adventure with uh, New April and uh, the little cat creature, Chaos. Mm -hmm. Or Mayhem is what they call it, Mayhem. Yeah. And uh, and I get to read... That is the reality we live in now. And I actually do get to use this shot in the video, which I'm happy with. I made this a long time ago. <laughs> the uh, but only two twenty. Uh, that I, seems. I think I pulled that out of. Uh, I, I I'm not sure. Oh yeah, where. I'm not. I'm not doubting the. Yeah. I'm not doubting the cannon. I'm just like, yeah. wow, really? Only. Uh, I would have to assume unarmored. Hmm. Because well, uh, even then. I, I, doesn't your average wrestler kind of weigh more than that? 
Well, uh, but uh, the Shredder isn't a uh, isn't built like a, isn't a wrestler. He's more of a, a Bruce Lee like narrow kind of he- of muscly, I would think. Hmm. I mean, he's 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 an ag- he's a ninja. He's got an agile fighting style. He's not really presented as being especially tall in most continuities. I mean, he was in like 2000 era and in 2012, but like in the original series, he's just basic human height. Hmm. Um, it's not like he's like you know uh, the Big Show or you know Goldberg no. But I always I would no. But I mean, even you know your your Randy Orton's and Dave Batista's and. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I think I was going off of one of the more like, uh, wiry, agile type builds as an assumption there. Uh, if I wasn't pulling it from some kind of obscure book, cause I've got dozens of them, yeah. um, might've come out of the, uh, the palladium game if knowing me and who knows how, how accurate anything in the palladium game is, but <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but man, I love that! I love that Palladium game. Uh, I will say that it it is impressive that in the first uh, several episodes of the new Ninja Turtles, um, there haven't been any. They're they're all new villains right now. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, the Origami Ninjas are very clearly connected with the foot. Oh yeah, but. At least they're taking a different avenue, and the the magic heavy approach is interesting. I have a feeling that if uh, I have a feeling that this is something where, like, if they ever do wind up doing an arc, they're probably going to do an, an arc somewhere along the uh, the trans dimensional tournament angle of things. Mm. Uh, either uh, either with the uh, the intergalactic wrestling or the uh, uh, the more the whole like run by a dragon mystical thing that they've done before and probably with john cena well yeah yeah i was i was tickled to find that the the first episode villain was john cena yeah yeah he's uh he's an interesting one they they get a little inspiration from a couple of different old villains for him i think um there's a little bit of lord drag in there but there's also some other uh some other bad guys um no, that one that one turned out nice. Uh, at, at least watchable, I would say. Um, yeah. I mean, there's always going to be nitpicks, but you know we wouldn't be nerds if there wasn't a nitpicking involved. <laughs> uh, but all in all, I mean, they're they're turning in a good uh, a good a good effort at least in the first couple episodes. I just I'll be interested to see what happens when they actually do reach a point where they want to do a two parter story that takes up a full twenty two. Yeah. Um, but let's see. And we want to run a short. I think we can run a short from our good friends at Coronet. Oh, I don't have the damned bones and the heartstone to act to animate a uh, vocabulary. Hmm. However, your committee will continue to investigate and hopes to present a definite recommendation at next month's meeting of the Civic Association. Four. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Willis. I want to talk about... Uh, you notch it up a little, I can I barely hear. Yeah, let me see here. what I can do here. On the west side. Uh, we need it because... Uh, because we need a place for our boys and girls to play. Okay, that's about as high as I can has an important idea mm, okay. to express, but he lacks the vocabulary. We need a playground because uh, the exact words because uh, I've been banned from the Chuck E. Cheese. In building your vocabulary, people can be interested in new ideas when those ideas are expressed in well-selected words. This so use of exact words problem. to communicate your ideas applies to I've written words, words as much as random. to spoken words. Chemistry. Hi, Dad. Would you be interested in... Oh, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. Something go wrong at the meeting? They pantsed me. Yes. I sort of made a... What's on your mind, son? I thought you might like to read... Why did I have you when I was 50? Yes, of course. 
our public parks, monuments, or playgrounds. Huh? Much of the juvenile delinquency in our community can be traced to our lack of public playgrounds and our lack of a planned recreational program. Wow, we are not without good, our son. public I'm gonna parks, have to steal the hell out but of this. they are landscape <laughs> monuments rather than playgrounds planned for the direction of youthful energy into character building channels. Why, Pete, you express your ideas very well. But uh, this isn't the way you talk, is it? Well, Keep that reading. Wait for the zinger. This is a term paper, and, well, as I understand it, when you're talking or writing, you use words that fit the occasion. But here, the words you use, they sound good, and uh, they seem to be the right words to say what you mean. Well, that's, I, well, that's what I... Where'd you learn all those words? For example, well, see, when I talk, I make sure to notebook. make words that sound as weaselly as I to am. Your vocabulary, so you can express your ideas better. Whenever I come across a new word, reading or listening to someone, I write it down. Later, I put it in this notebook. Russia! Let's see. I write down the pronunciation and the definitions of each word, and then some synonyms. I thought it would help me with my but then, of course, social I try skills, using but it word. seems to have accomplished using the opposite. Using the word correctly a few times is what really fixes it in your vocabulary. And a good working vocabulary helps you to be more explicit. Well, you certainly surprised me with your vocabulary. Yes, indeed. Son, no, that was you don't have... Be more son, you don't have any explicit. friends whatsoever, do you? So Mr. Willis began a vocabulary notebook in a business-like way. First, he considered the context in which the word was used. Now, where did I hear that? From Mary. She was talking about redecorating this room. Dear, I think we ought to put a balance over the window. She it would make it more dramatic. Oh. Don't you think a balance would be effective? Hmm. Balance must be some kind of decoration. But do I have to bother with all these special words? Maybe I'd better. I certainly want to have a say in how the house is decorated. Ah, valance. Short curtain as the valance over the top of a window. Hmm, the valance would look good up there. Maybe this will help me understand what Mary's talking about. I don't think this guy's problem was that he didn't know enough words. I think he's just Valance had only a single meaning. <laughs> Other words, like vacillate, have many meanings. Sure, my wife just the said only way things to tell at which me. Meaning is intended Did I is really need to know what the hell any of them meant? Also, Synonyms would it have been too much trouble to waver, go... Oscillate, I'm not familiar with that word. Wait What's a minute. The balance? Too many words mean nearly the same thing, but still they're different. Nobody can learn all those words. I'm going to bed. <laughs> No one can learn all these words. The next morning, Mr. Willis found he couldn't escape unfamiliar words when his wife called. Oh, John. Yes, dear. Will you stop we must the strike out the these unnecessary the words in a vicious coup. All right, dear. Anthology. Why does everybody in this family use these fancy words? In the morning ring, newspaper, ring, he ring, found ring, words ring, that looked ring, familiar ring. enough, yet when he studied them, their meanings weren't explicit. Even in his work, he began to be aware that he used words that he could not define <laughs> precisely. Oh, wow, it this guy is just deeply stupid. Awakened to his own ignorance, he's thrust into an feasible. existential crisis. Allocate. Man, if that's the size of the newsprint he's got to read, no Willis. wonder. There's a gentleman here from the ABC Printing Company. He wants to discuss their new electrotyping process with variable type fonts. Um, I'll tell him you're busy to come back later. Wow, she just watched her boss have a bit of breakdown. Explicit. You know, Dad, explicit. A good working vocabulary helps you to be more explicit. Well, 
I guess I need this. <laughs> anthology. An anthology of modern plays. This is the book Mary wanted. Uh -oh. You know that. Explicit. So that's what an anthology is. That's a collection. not something you Now, what else came of my trip to the library? Each of us has certain interests which we need to share <laughs> with others. If we know the special vocabulary, we will understand what people are talking about. And other people will understand us. This book will help Mr. Willis have a say in the decoration of his home. This book, on the fundamentals of printing, will help him in the conduct of his business. So this is less a, thing, uh, a, a short about vocabulary on special building interest and more subjects a short about Help us build the vocabulary things. we need to Just talk the language of others. Just being a goddamn idiot. And that's like, not the only language I'm going to talk. At the next meeting of the Civic Association, I'm going to sell my idea or white my privilege on pure Willis. display. The chair recognizes Mr. Willis. How to fail upward Mr. and Chairman? keep doing so. Ladies and gentlemen, for many years now, our city council has wavered between a policy of no parks and beautiful but useless parks. The time has come to You know, I think if we did this one at the point where he lady. starts his speech, we just need to start Another throwing lady. random words out there. For the West Side. <laughs> yes, people can be interested in new ideas when those ideas are expressed clearly and effectively. By someone who isn't Increased this knowledge guy. of words has enabled Mr. Willis to think through his ideas more logically and to present them more effectively to an appreciative audience. We will show them that it is feasible that the city budget is nothing more or less than a plan for spending our money. A plan which can and must be adapted to meet our <coughs> needs. Words that we choose carefully to say what we mean, choose for the audience and the occasion, help us gain support for our ideas. And not only in speaking. Effective use of words helps us think and write more forcefully and with more interest when we prepare term papers and other school assignments. Forceful thinking is a command of words useful skill. helps us contribute to debates and discussions. We communicate more quickly and more effectively. Being skilled in the use of words aids us in selling ourselves when we look for jobs. Whenever we're around people, a good vocabulary helps us say what we mean and understand what others mean. Pete has developed his skill in communication through words, just as Mr. Willis has, just as you can, by being alert to words, by using words that say exactly what you mean, by building your vocabulary. Be sure to form a list of words that you will use then nonstop forever and ever, like cuck and this and These are the only words you will ever need. Explicit. Mr. Willis was later identified as a large piece of escaped boiled beef and was a <laughs> to appreciate though that like their their thing it's like and what is the you know sort of mumbling guy like what's he trying to get done it's like oh he's he's actually just trying to make a park that children can play in so they'll stop like setting fire to the local vase <laughs> you know what <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean the guy can't communicate well but it's an okay it's, idea yeah this is this is <laughs> Yeah, we need a playground for our kids. It's like, how is that? Is that really that contentious, at least back then? I mean, now, yeah, we just send them straight to prison, but... Yeah. Uh, I dearly love the alternate reality these shorts take place in. 
Well, I mean, they do kind of have to set them in a place where all of these problems that these people are dealing with are not due to the fact that they're all World War II veterans. <laughs> uh, in an era before they knew that things like post-traumatic stress disorder existed. Um, they, they, they call it something else, and they didn't understand it. But it's like, it's like, oh, why is Mr. Willis taking no interest in anything since 1940? Oh. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Maybe that's see, why. He is. See, I just kind of went on the assumption that they just assumed that you were rock stupid. Well, that was kind of one of the uh, one of the base assumptions. Although, it in a lot of cases, I think it might have just been done from a standpoint that they were making these to hit the. Uh, I, I would bet dollars to donuts that this guy, that the people who were making these films were probably all former GIs. <laughs> uh, given the time frame, it makes a lot of sense. And the way that the uh, the military does it is you explain it for the dumbest functional human being. That way there's no mistakes. <laughs> or as, And you know what? That still doesn't work. <laughs> but imagine how much worse it would be if they didn't. <laughs> it's like everything is a step-by-step process. Everything is put in clear, concise language. <laughs> so it's like... It, with it, cartoon illustrations, if possible. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people will talk about how that's condescending, and maybe it is, but it's effective, and that's the scary part. I mean, that's what they literally do with Trump. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, it's a... Uh, it's it, it's interesting that, like, with things like this, where it's like, okay, what are we writing a... What do they want us to write a film about? Vocabulary? Oh, geez, we're going to have a really hard time stretching that out. <laughs> um, what if we make it a larger thing about just not being an incurious dolt? <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah, it was called Shell Shock. Shifty Shell Shock. <laughs> just, I just saw uh, Rock Review's newest Regretting the Pass about, uh, fuck, what, what, was that? what was that band? They, they did that Butterfly song. I just blanked. The lead guy, uh, that come my lady, come come my lady song that you couldn't escape for about a year and then they vanished. Let me find Crazy it. Oh, Town? Crazy Town. Yeah. Yeah, the lead, the lead of Crazy Town, his name is fucking shit. He goes by Shifty Shell Shock. Wow. Which is... That sounds the like a, a doofus stupid. character from the old Sergeant Snafus or something. Yeah. It's like Sergeant Snafu and Shifty Shellshock. But, yeah. Uh, wow. Should we put something up on the screen? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a thing. And there we go. Back with Saki there. Uh, somebody in the chat did check, and there are uh, more than one uh, uh, six foot one wrestler who are in the uh, two hundred and twenty two pound range. All right. Uh, according to the abstruse one, CM Punk and Alias are both two twenty two. So yeah, that's not okay. too, too terribly far off. That works. Yep. Uh, I apologize, by the way, if anybody, if there's kind of like an ongoing huh in my audio, I have fans on. My place does not have proper air conditioning. We have heat, but not air conditioning. So I have to have windows and fans going to keep from baking. Wow. Well, apparently AC wasn't a big deal. I've been through a ton of buildings down here that just don't really have... You know, running cool AC. It just wasn't a thing you really needed up until a few years ago. Mm, yep. Yeah. I can get it. Yeah. Well, when we eventually move, we'll just have to see what we can find with actual AC. Yeah. My mom, uh, her AC just broke, and they have to replace the whole system. It's a big, expensive pain. Yeesh. Yep. And let's see what else we got going on. Um, not a whole lot going down today. Uh, just popping in, doing some 
Yeah, it's it's kind of been slow. We've just been working on the videos. I've got to get the next bleep going. Yes, indeed. Actually, I should probably we should probably pop back to that video so we can get it out for tomorrow. Um, I was there... want to do a. Did you want to go over like those little short films that you'd pulled up? Yeah, let me grab those real quick. Hang on. I'd like, go, I'd like to go. I'd like to go an hour. You know. Yeah, an hour is viable. I also haven't had any caffeine today, so that's mm. uh, that's probably not the best. Well, if you want to go grab a caffeine once the film starts rolling. Well, that would require me to go to the come and go. Ah. Uh, nothing in the house? Nothing in the house. And I will never not be deeply amused and disturbed by the existence of come and go. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's terrible. No one's really sure why they haven't changed their name. Mm-hmm. I mean, at this point, I think they're just leaning into it. I mean, even the way it's spelled is just... It's with a K. Yeah. yeah. Is it, It's K-U-M, right? Yeah, K-U-M. Yeah, yeah. It's less the K and more the U-M that's the... Yeah. See, if it was spelled, you know, C-O-M-E and go, that would be fine. Yeah. Then only middle schoolers would be authorized to snicker at it. Oh, Becky, uh, when it comes to cutting down on caffeine, I uh, I have come up with a, a bit of a solution. There are these crystal light uh, packs that you can buy. Now, they're, they're like, they say that one of these little tube packs uh, is for a 16-ounce drink. That's bullshit. Don't do that. What you do is you get yourself a large bottle, you know, preferably, you know, they say one 16-ounce bottle per tube. Don't. Make it at least 32 ounces, preferably 48. Fill it with water. Put in one tube. Shake. Ice. It's it's light water. It's light flavor. And it provides caffeine. And it, you know, then you give yourself just a little bit of soda to kind of ease down. Yeah. It That's really been working for me. Less, less because of caffeine and more because my stomach is a roiling cauldron of hate and bile. And too much soda eventually leads to everybody in the near vicinity becoming a loser that day. I see, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I will say that uh, if you are like me and you're not, uh, that you perhaps have a little bit of a limited sense of taste, that the, 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 the Crystal Light drinks are perfectly acceptable at their basic you know, instructions. Uh, it's just Greg likes a, a slightly lighter drink. Um, I, I have a particular uh, uh, intolerance towards that kind of vaguely aspartame aftertaste you get with a lot of that kind of drink. Oh, that's how I know I'm alive. <laughs> it's like once that starts to wear off, I know I need another dose. Yeah. But... Um, uh, yeah, Becky, do the do the do the water and the crystal light. Thankfully, they're cheap. You know, you can usually find a box of like eight or ten for like two bucks, and then just stick with filter water. Yeah, I've been uh, trying to drink more just water, water. Yeah. But I think my body winds up craving the salt from everything else. Hmm. So shall we start looking at some of them silly uh, commercials that you found? Absolutely. Let's look at silly commercials that you found. Futuramic Design, the hobble of tomorrow. Futuramic. It's a brand new word for dramatic design of the future. As architects will tell you, Futuramic Design combines beauty with utility. In houses or in automobiles, Futuramic never, design means styling with a purpose. Pants. The new 1948 Oldsmobile is the first of the Futuramic cars. It's designed for utmost passenger comfort and maximum visibility, as well as for smartness and style. And with GM Hydromatic Drive, there's no gear shift. Engage no the Hydromatic Drive. Just step on the gas and go. Atomic batteries to power. Way, the Futuramic way. The Oldsmobile way. 
Maximum visibility because it's 48 feet there long. There comes now in his merry Oldsmobile. It's a Futuramic Oldsmobile with a new Futuramic car feature. from Oldsmobile. Automatic old, windows, old automatic top. <laughs> Just pull a handy control, and before you've had time to admire the smooth flowing Futuramic lines of this real post war Oldsmobile, the top is down automatically. Like to drive it? Just slip into that big, comfortable front seat, touch that button, and presto, the seat adjusts itself. Driving's almost automatic, too, with GM Hydromatic Drive. There's no clutch pedal, and gears shift automatically in this smart, new, futuramic Oldsmobile for 1948. Crunch. Watch how easy it is to drive in a hydromatic Oldsmobile. You can be this special on camera mounted on no the back problem. of the car will give you a bird's eye view. Keep your eye on the driver's right hand. See? Even I like how the car looks like a series of pills signs, just glued together. Hands on the wheel. Even as she starts up again and pulls away from traffic, there's no gear shifting, no clutch pushing. All she does is steer the car and operate the accelerators. There's not even a clutch pedal there. The camera shows that hydromatic drive works almost like magic. Keeps you always in the right gear, automatically. It's smart to own an Olds. A futuramic Oldsmobile with GM hydromatic drive. An old veratic future, Beal. Now scrape them off. Modern home or the truly modern car. It's functional oh, yeah, design that comes. Smart styling in that house is styling right with a purpose, <laughs> as seen in this new 1948 like Futuramic old Futuramic is a brand new word What's created to describe this Latin? brand new post-war General Motors car, luxuriously appointed inside and out. The Futuramic Oldsmobile brings truly modern, post-war design to the automotive field. There's utility as well as beauty in every smart detail. And There's the safety of greater visibility. There's automatic shifting too, and no clutch pushing, thanks to GM Hydromatic Drive. The smart way to go is the automatic way in a Futuramic Oldsmobile. One of the reasons I like that one is that uh, I find ad old advertising and old uh, instructional films, when they've just invented now ubiquitous technology, kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wish I could find it again. I found somebody who was, I found an old film that apparently they would show at appliance stores to teach people how to use automatic washing machines and dryers. <laughs> Well, there was the one we was the, there was that one short that was all about teaching people how to use touch, you know, touch button dialing rather than the di than the old rotary dial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I uh, think we have that up on YouTube. That's not one of the ones that we can't show. Right. I don't think. And the uh, the the thing that they wind up having, that it's like it's just interesting to me that like uh, everything that we now take for granted as technology, there had to be a public service campaign. To teach people how to use mm. and you can find old posters like propaganda posters that are things like don't uh don't be inconsiderate and and smelly use paper <laughs> oh yeah there was the uh you can find the ads that are for toilet paper they're like now no now with no splinters yeah 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 now without splinters which was funny because, like, in the, uh, I, I used to read Mad Magazine a lot as a kid, which anyone who knows me is like, oh, obviously. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I remember is there was some old Mad Magazine, it's one of those little jokes that cat caught with me forever. It was some, like, Pentagon guy try, uh, going on about how great the Americas was, and he, he's holding the, he's squeezing a piece of, sh uh, a roll of Charmin, and he's like, and you see this? If you did this with a piece of Ruski, with a roll of Ruski toilet paper, you get splinters. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was a joke, but <laughs> apparently, no, that was a problem. No. Apparently. Yeah, yeah, that was. <laughs> I oh, remember yeah, but... that from the big fat quiz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, like. 
Let's toss an image up on the screen, because... Oh, yeah, yeah. Unless we're trying to reprogram people. Let's see. A ver <laughs> Newspaper article, how to take a shower bath. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go take I, a vertical squirt bath. I've seen... I, I've seen advertising clippings on everything from how to use a how to use a safety razor uh, to the operation of washing machines, like what kinds of soap and to use, soap to use and such. Um, you know, we we make fun of the whole "don't wash your clothes with gasoline" thing, but apparently that was a big enough problem that they had to have uh, public service campaigns at one point. I mean, that was kind of the only way to do it, more or less. Apparently. <laughs> And uh, there was there was all of that stuff, and then there were just uh, one thing that I think is that I think we've kind of done a disservice by stopping to do all this type of thing, uh, because there's a lot of things that we just need educational films for, like most of the stuff that you got in your uh, in your home ec educational films, the ones we make fun of, the actual factual information is extremely useful. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd had, like, a home ec class in school. Yeah, because, like, the, or even just, like, make them watch the couple of films. Because, like, there, there's one that um, uh, that's, like, about comparison shopping. Yeah. And, like, my parents taught me how to do that. But a lot of my friends that I'll, I'll go to a grocery store with them and, I'm, I, and I, they don't know about, like, the unit pricing and things like that. Mm-hmm. And there's, uh, that's a valuable thing to teach people. Like, how do you, how, how to, how to properly shop for things, how to balance value versus uh, quality and things of that nature. And I think the other thing is, is that, um, you know, they, uh, the food grading, how, like, all that stuff actually means something, but nobody uses it anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean that's the that's useful type information, but I think simple what... simple dishwashery, simple changing a tire. Mm -hmm. I mean I know diddly shit about cars, but I've at least figured out you know changing a tire and oil change, and you know, if not oil changing, then at least you know putting Check. some goddamn oil in it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, the the thing is, is like these are all skills that people are like. Well, why would you teach that in school? I mean, you should be getting that from your parents. It's not everybody's got parents. <laughs> Uh, my par both parents my parents, parents worked. Yeah. <laughs> both my parents worked, you know, 40 hours a week. Yeah, I mean, this is this is knowledge that was normal, originally handed down, like, through families. But when things changed and those lines of communications breaks, it just takes one generational break and that knowledge is gone. This is the type of stuff that you got to reintroduce. And the other thing is, is a lot of it that people think they, they learn from their parents. They probably actually learn from, like, frickin' film strips yeah their parents learned them from film strips it's the old thing about you know the gram grandpa finds out that grandma's uh, old family recipe came from a betty crocker cookbook mm -hmm. you know it's just like uh and the the and the best part is that all of that's happening right now and we have no idea what it is <laughs> We have no idea what the massive change thing... I mean, we can spot some of them, but there's stuff going on that we have no idea it's going to stick around forever. How not to get taken in by Nigerian prince scams. Where's our film strip on that? Yeah, that should actually be something they have in school. <laughs> like, yeah. There should be things like, here's how to not fall for Nigerian prince scams. Here's to avoid obvious phishing scams. Here's what BCC in your email is for. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Becky po uh, Hopkins in chat points out that sadly WikiHow is becoming our new home act. Uh, yeah, I think it, I would agree it's sad not that having WikiHow is a bad thing, but just that we don't also have home act. I mean, even if we had in high school a home ec teach, uh, class, it was literally just pull up this thing on WikiHow and learn it. At least then you know that they would they would have to look it over once. And and I, to this day, wind up. I'll occasionally have points where I'll remember something from an old film strip, or I'll remember something from an old class, and it comes in useful. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that steer into the skid thing saved my life on at least two occasions. Yeah. And uh, let's. I, I would swear that we've covered at least one or two shorts with genuine. Oh well, I mean, hell, there we go. The cautious twins. Mm-hmm. That that was actually a short that contained you know decent tips about you know personal safety and all that. It was just <laughs> delivered in a horrifying manner. Yeah. Um, David horrifying Mitchell, and annoying. Uh, David Mitchell has this whole routine where he's talking about how there's two types of kid children. Uh, there are sort of naturally cautious children, and there are more uh, active children. And that all of the warnings are keyed to the active children, because they're the ones that they most have to worry about killing themselves doing something stupid. Mm -hmm. And he says, whereas I, of being of a more nervous disposition, maybe occasionally needed the message that, hey, it's okay. Today, you probably won't die. Being of an anxious disposition, it might have been helpful to occasionally get a message that eh, you probably won't die today. <laughs> I mean, I we've still got it. You know, the look both ways. Mm-hmm. Don't cross the street in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the block. Yep. Oh no! You set one of those things to music; it'll stick in their head forever. Mm-hmm. That was that was our dear friend Schoolhouse Rock in Sesame Street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> refreshing a stream with a chat room underneath refreshes the chat as well. <laughs> okay, that's, that's maybe not quite so vital, but you know, refreshing the stream when things look down probably doesn't help. That that might be something. <laughs> Anybody familiar with RDA will, uh... <laughs> uh Chimera Gooey uh, was uh, mentioned. How, how to tell between actual news and Fox News. That's, <laughs> uh... No, they're, they, uh... Y- you joke, but... <laughs> you joke, but, like, actual, like, here's how to fact-check something. Here's how to know when something sounds suspicious. I mean, the number one new... The w- number one rule... Uh, for uh, that I would say for telling the difference between real news and fake news is if anything is telling you exactly what you expect to hear or exactly what you want to hear, then chances are you're not getting news, you're getting a sales pitch. <laughs> and I mean, I find that true even for stuff that's even in my own uh, my own political sphere or whatever you want to call that. Yeah, the bubble, if you will. It's well, like there's it, also a uh, check for sources, as in check if sources exist. Yeah, that's the number one thing. It's like, first, is there a source? And two, is the source what they say it is? Because, my God, there's so much stuff. Just on Tumblr alone, uh, it's like you, somebody, like, such and such is this way. You follow it back. Wait, no, they're saying the exact opposite. What the hell? Mm-hmm. It's a... Uh, um, like the uh, and uh, of course now with the like super clickbaity uh, uh, the the habit of like super clickbaity advertising uh, headlines, um, I've found so many times where like they'll take th- where like somebody says something the headline makes it sound awful everyone de- dive uh, dog piles them for the headline and then you're like but that's not what was in the actual article it's not even remotely the same. And those articles aren't written, but those headlines aren't written by the people who write the articles either. Hmm. Remember, you're talking, you're working for the New York Post, so every headline must have nude, maya, subway, and headless. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually very, very accurate. Uh... <laughs> Crediting creators is good. A primer on reverse image searches. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> but no, any, anything from, like, Google to, um, you know, comparative shopping online, check your sources, Snopes. Nothing is easier to fake than a Twitter, uh, Twitter screen cap. Mm-hmm. And yet... So many people fuck it up. (laughs) 
Have, have you ever heard of Harm Hides at Home? I have heard of that short. I don't think we've pulled it up yet. Is that one of the Safety Woman ones, or is that along those lines? And we'll let the delay in chat between chat and stream. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think Harm Hides at Home is a Safety Woman, because I just searched for that, and the screenshot has... Safety woman with her weird tiny menorah shield. Ah, uh, yes. Wow. What the... Which, yeah, and Rift Tracks has done that. I mean, that doesn't really stop us anymore. <laughs> yeah, there. We we don't have the same sense of humor as the Rift Tracks guys. Uh, we in the also time... they put out a sh they put out a thing like well, at least what once a week. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're making... It's hard not to find something they haven't touched. They're making houses and cars money with that type of thing. Like, uh, we're... We, uh, we're making lunch money. Yeah, lunch money. So, like, I don't feel terribly uh, terribly bad about uh, stepping on something they've done, especially since they've done so much, and also because we've... Even in situations where we've done something and they've come along and done it again, there's almost never any joke overlap. Um... Yeah, I can think of a couple, because I remember uh, when they, they hit Ricky Raccoon on one of their live shows mm -hmm. not too long ago, and yeah, I was like, wow, we, we've managed to make completely separate jokes for almost everything. It was kind of nice. I mean, they what they did was funny as hell, but it was kind of nice to see, yeah. Well, I also just think, like, for, just from my own experience, the fact that I've watched Manos Rift at least three different ways... I don't think there's really any any. Uh, I, I don't think anybody like watches a. Uh, I I think people, if they're generally good with watching anything twice, are good with work, watching two different riffs of the same thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are some people who who just hate to watch anything twice, but uh, I don't think those are really our audience, given our the very retready nature of our. <laughs> I mean, I can think of they, there's at least three different versions of uh, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians rift. From the various Best Brains crew, because you got the original, and then both Cinematic, Titanic, and Rift Tracks have had their go at it. H hang on just a second. I have to go uh, find out what ra what Harley's barking at. <laughs> <sighs> Bit dark for you guys. The British protect and survive spots. Uh, the British stuff is its own can of worms with YouTube. Apparently, they apparently. Th a lot of British stuff does fall under public domain in the U.S., but not worldwide. Because we've got, like, some British uh, travel shorts that we had riffed before. But when we try to put them on YouTube, despite the fact that they're ancient as hell, they get dinged. I think it was, and I don't think it was, we're just going to take your advertising. I think, if memory serves, it was... We're going to block this worldwide. How dare you? Because, of course, we all know what a lucrative prospect these ancient shorts of this ancient ham staring it up close at the screen and being silly for his mm -hmm. safety is. False alarm. I think she was just barking at the people who are uh, drinking beer outside. Ah, uh, but yeah, uh, Becky wanted to know about British short films, riffing those, and it's like, eh. Oh yeah, the BBC is a bitch. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Ugh. Okay, oh, well, Tom, hope, you're, hope your dad is recovering fine. Uh, I do, too. I don't know what's going on, but... No. Apparently, apparently his father was recovering from a leg surgery. Best of luck, Tom. Have have a good time. Plus, I think we're about done for the evening. It's uh, we're we've crossed that one hour mark. And yeah, I'm melting ever so slightly, and I well, I, let's see. I haven't eaten anything since about one, and it's seven now where I am. Yeah, yeah. You I probably should, need maybe, to I should maybe put you some food. You start having problems with low blood sugar. Yeah. Um. Anyway, everybody, thanks for showing up. Uh, we're going to have a new video up, hopefully tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. And then I believe on Tuesday, the latest rifflet will drop for public. It is a 
trailer of 1960s, I believe, sci-fi. Little little ditty called Robinson Crusoe in Space. It is as dumb as it sounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one does drop. All yep. right, well, you guys are in for a treat. And and sorry to backload the month again, but that's kind of... I, I had a visitor over the course of the beginning of the month. A good two weeks worth of the beginning of the month, and... Hopefully we should spread things out a little better. All right. Well, I and hopefully we'll get those goddamn deadly games DVDs uh, encoded. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I am shutting down the live stream. Good evening, everybody. Good night, folks. All right.